Joe, welcome to the welcome to the madness. <laughs> Hold your horses. Uh, Ken, can you yell out that door and tell somebody to bring me a box of Kleenex? Nice. <laughs> uh, that will be good. Get Callie a heater, guys. Thank you, Ben. I agree. Have you noticed that the lights, the new lights, are they feeling brighter to you than the old lights? No. Really? My eyes are completely burned. I can't see a thing all day long, so no matter I, what. it doesn't matter to me. For some reason, nine they, years of looking into you, lights every day will yeah. do that to you. For some reason, I think that they feel brighter, um, and and I think I feel that because I technically know they actually are brighter than the others. Who wants to know they're brighter? Yeah. Yeah. Make them feel bright. Yeah. That, there's nothing. There's nothing that makes something feel accurate more than facts. But, right. Uh, you know, what are you going to do? Um, okay, yawn number one. Has one now down. <laughs> one we got that out of the way. It's when I'm cold, and I'm always cold, so that's, you know, one of those issues. When I'm cold, I yawn. You could wear, yeah, actually, that is one of the reasons because you're trying to get more blood flow to yeah, your brain. Yeah, it's like blood, trying blood to pump flow, flow to up the, brain. the blood. Yeah. Pump up the volume. Pump up the volume. Uh, and yes, Paul, I would love to wear a bad Christmas sweater right about now. Look at look at that. You Holy do have cow. she has goosebumps. Yeah, you ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, you're ready. All right. Beer, beer storage. Storage beer and beer, beer say beer storage beer, and electric storage vehicles. And electric vehicles. All right. What do they have in common? Okay. Ready? Yeah. Hey guys, I'm John P. Is, are we getting an echo? Hey guys, we're getting an echo. No, we're not. You just hear. Echo. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're. We hear ourselves a little bit. If you talk into this, you hear yourself a little bit from uh, the speaker. Oh, okay, okay. I was just making sure nothing was going to be wrong. Okay, try that John P. line again. It was brilliant. Just was do it, do, do it, it better. I apparently didn't deliver it, it with enough. P. <laughs> yeah. From the John P. Right. A little bit more P. A little more P. <laughs> Okay, you ready? ready. Ken, you good? Here we go. Hey guys, I'm John P. And I'm Callie Lewis. Beer, storage, and electric vehicles. What do they have in common? 45 drives. <laughs> that was. Hey guys, welcome to the show. Callie, how are you feeling today? I'm a little cold today, actually, John. You may be cold, but you're nowhere near as cold as you would be if you were visiting our guests who are joining us from, from a Canada. wintry tundra, wintry just wonderland. That is true. I cannot complain being from Texas and looking at these guys That's from right. Canada. Welcome, Daryl, Doug, and Brett. How are you guys? Thank you very much. Yeah, we're doing great. We're actually pretty warm in here. Don't get used to it, eh? Y you mean you have heaters in Canada? Yeah. All, all the technology. They've wow. made. They've actually heat. Heat has actually made its way up to Canada. Wow. Because you know why? The heat rises. That's right. Oh, that's awesome. That I'm so glad great. you guys are warm because I'm not. <laughs> I've lost all You're heat. such a wuss. I mean, <laughs> we were just talking before we got started. You know, this is the way Geek Beat goes. You guys know this, right? We ramble about things and then we talk about real stuff. So just, <laughs> just bear with us. We were just talking a few minutes ago. Uh, the temperature up there, guys, what is it? Uh, I think it's probably about 15 or 20 in the Fahrenheit degrees, is somewhere around there. 15. That is ridiculous. 15. It's I, 50. It's 50 in <laughs> Dallas, and we're complaining. So, right, exactly. Uh, that kind of tells I, you the difference. I just want you to ask him more questions that make him say about a boat. A boot. A boot. Oh. <laughs> uh, they, they, we do. Uh, oh. I got a lobster if you're with a boat. No. There you go. <laughs> you know, and John, look. And look, it just proves uh, yeah. that we're not far off from one another. Uh, right. <laughs> we, we have one too, so. And Doug actually brought us, uh, you know, uh, lobsters, real live lobsters. That he did. The last time he was here in Dallas. That's right. If you guys do, if you guys missed that, we learned how to actually really 
cook and eat lobsters, and we shared that with you. Yeah. And I'm sure that if you go to geeky.tv and do a search for 45 drives, you could find that episode and learn. I didn't realize, uh, I didn't realize that the little tail f f finny thing at the very end had meat in it. Yeah, I'd always have thrown that thing away. I had no Don't idea. Don't throw that away. Don't throw that away. Watch that video because it's ridiculous. Anyway, enough about lobsters. Yeah, let's talk about beer. Beer, beer. Okay, you guys, uh, Doug. Well, first of all, before we get into beer or storage or electric vehicles, let's just set this whole thing up. Okay. You guys, we are live. We're watching the chat room live. I've got the chat room up here on my computer. We are paying attention. You guys can ask these three anything. And by any, I anything? mean, think, 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 ask me anything. Think Reddit, think. Let's just go all out. We're going to talk storage. We're going to talk beer, electric vehicles, uh, all kinds of things. But if you want to know ask anything. what kind of toothpaste they had, uh, they used, you do, can ask that. Do you guys have anything. toothpaste in Canada? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, no, we just use ice crystals. Uh, right. Right. <laughs> we get shipments through in the winter, so we usually just try to find something else. Okay. Right. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought it might be maybe it's maple flavored or something. I don't know. Why would it be maple flavored? Uh, that's more. I don't know. Oh. I don't know. Okay. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Can we get back to beer for a minute? We can get back to beer. Because you guys invented a new storage product that we we helped unveil called the Beerinator, and I am curious because while you were here in town, we we. We used the beerinator. We filled it. We have since used it many times to fill it with ice and fill it with beer. But you know, Doug, we had had a conversation about perhaps advancing the cause, and I'm just curious if there's been any more work from the R&D department on on version two or any other variants. Well, we're, we're at the theoretical stage on our improvements. See that. The, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Right. The real holdup is it's such a good product. We use it too much. We can't. Never find time. Oh, I see. Clarity, moving forward. <laughs> it's, yours is <laughs> yours is Finding always. Clarity is difficult with the beer around. Yeah. That's your point. Yeah. 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 It's always full of beer and ice. Right. So. Uh, I, I've never just... plans. We talk about the plans over the beer quite a bit, don't we? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well. I see we're not making much progress on the beerinator, but we have made progress on the storinator. So, uh, first now, of all, what is the storinator? Let's talk all, about yeah. that. You guys, tell us what is the storinator, and tell us what the latest updates are on the storinator. Sure. Well, the storinator is our uh, sort of it's our prime product for 45 drives. The storinator is a large storage server, um, and uh, it's a full server server motherboard with a post bus adapter card that wires directly to. 45 hard drive slots. So, uh, and it comes with a range of connectivity. Um, and uh, so basically you can plug in a whole bunch of hard drives. Uh, typically you run a Linux operating system or something like a, a FreeNAS uh, network attached storage appliance software, and then uh, make large RAID arrays and uh, store lots of stuff, whatever it is you want to store. Store lots of stuff. Well, we, we oh, that's do. General. Well, as as you guys uh, probably know, you recall hearing us say we have one of these mm -hmm. storinators here in our data center. We were so thrilled to get that in our hands. That I think it was one of the happiest days uh, of my for, life, uh, of, of all of our lives, especially Ken's life. That's right. Our engineer. And, actually, probably. Maybe, maybe not, because now no. Ken has to support us with it. But that's but, true. That's a good point. But we also have uh, our friends over at Seagate to thank because yes. they 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 sent over a huge batch of six terabyte drives, which we use to load it up, and so we have 270 terabytes of storage in that one machine, which is maybe how much I don't are we know. using? Um. Not that much. No. <laughs> Not that. We may, Doug, we may have overdone that just a bit. Well, you know what? The, the beauty of the thing, I, I think, when well, we sell these things for all, you know, there's all sorts of uh, applications these things are getting used for. Uh, video is a big one. Uh, you know, the problem that you guys have with the video is a problem that a lot of people have. Uh, 
you know, just accumulate a lot. You produce video, you got raw clips, uh, you have edited pieces, um, and uh, it, it just ends up being a lot of data. We see these used for, you know, as sort of general storage vaults. Um, we use one of these for uh, our company's data. Now, as you said, one of these machines, you can put 270 terabytes of data in a single machine. Our company, from day one, um, and we're a company of about 100 people, we keep all our orders, everything we've ever had electronically uh, is there, and it's, it's CAD drawings, which, you know, they're not small, they're not video sized though. But we only, our accumulation of data is about, you know, four or five terabytes. Really? So, yeah, it, no, that's, all, that's all we have. However, here, here's what happens in, in situation. We have four or five terabytes of, uh, of our full amount of data. And actually, I don't think I counted in the, uh, the video that uh, Chris Bedeen produces right. in that. But we have this live data, which has to be there. We have 100 people and uh, work in the company. And, uh, just a little anecdote. The other day, um, somebody, actually Stephen McNeil, who's our head of sales for Mr. 45 Mr. 45 himself. himself. He plugged in a wrong cable into our network and created a loop from one switch to another and up through and took down our whole network. Nice. Oh. <laughs> I'll have to try that. So well, uh, don't, please don't give John any ideas. <laughs> so, so here's what happened. It was really cool. At first, I'm sitting in my office and email doesn't send. And I've been through this before and years gone by and I go, uh oh. And I look outside. Next thing you know, the heads are popping up in the cubicles. And everyone's going, is your network working? Is your network working? And within about 10 minutes, everybody in the place, including your whole manufacturing floor, which runs on uh, you know, data and, and jobs, you know, the whole place shut down. So uh, anyway, data availability. So actually, you know what, Daryl, let me let you, so we use ours, and there's, there's about, let, let's say five terabytes of data that, that lie. High availability, so backup's important. So, what do you talk about our, our backup speed, Daryl? Um, yeah, well, like Doug mentioned, the biggest thing for us is to make sure the data is available all the time. It's pushed out across the network to all the manufacturing areas and, and so on. They pull this data in, be able to know what jobs to cut, it feeds you know, the, the machines to cut the metal. Um, it all stems from this one location. So, what we have is we have inside of our store data machine, we have a number of drives with about like I said, five or six terabytes worth of data on them. And inside the same machine, we have another RAID array, which is a backup array. And we back off every two hours, all of the live data gets backed up to this backup array um, so that we're never any more than two hours you know, out uh, data-wise. At the end of every day, we have another um, store data server over in another building, which is connected by a direct fiber cable. And we back off the entire machine to this backup server, which is essentially a duplicate of the first um, each night. So in the worst case scenario, if our primary machine actually went down completely, um, the motherboard died, something along those lines, all we have to do is change the IP address and everything is back to normal. So we're down for maybe minutes as opposed to hours or a day to try to replace things. Okay, I've got some questions for you guys. Uh, first of all, we had a few questions from the, I don't know how these AMA style things are so supposed to work, so I think we'll probably we bounce just, back and forth. And yeah, just, we'll just totally bounce back and forth like that guy, with them. that guy JD asked what your favorite craft beer is. Yeah, that's true. What is it? Oh, favorite craft beer? Big Spruce. Big Spruce. I don't know anything about beer. Big okay. Spruce is, uh, is Big Spruce Spruce, is, uh, he's got a whole range of them. Uh, He's in the country. Uh, we're in Nova Scotia, Cape Breton Island. Big Spruce is in the central Cape Breton. Grows his own hops on his farm and brews wonderful beer. Absolutely wonderful beer. Nice. Daryl and Brett, do you feel the same way? Is your vote going the same way? But my favorite beer is a vitamin O. Good old Owens. Brewed in Halifax. Best stuff you can buy. I like how he I like how he picked up his cup as if he's drinking it right now. I know. Okay? It was I was like, wait, well, is, is that this is the second the next best stuff too? <laughs> Daryl? Daryl? Uh, I'm actually not a beer drinker, so I'm gonna defer that one to uh, the expert. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's okay. Uh, he's okay even though. All right, cool. All right, another question we had was uh, who's the best cloud storage provider? Uh, you know what? We 
really, really couldn't answer that. <laughs> because, is that because you provide the storage to many different storage providers? <laughs> that, that's, that's part of it. And we're also, to be very honest, we're, we don't use any cloud storage ourselves. We have so much storage our, uh, ourselves. We have two buildings uh, on site here. And uh, so we most of what we do is internal. So we're not good people to ask that, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> All right. Speaking of the uh, the stuff that you have on site, and you you mentioned earlier, I think Daryl mentioned earlier something about the cutting machines, etc. Tell us about what types of fit. I want to know what kind of machines you have. Do you have like yeah. water jet mach cut you know cutting machines, laser machines, plasma cutting machines? What kind of manufacturing machines do you have in your he facility? He just wants to know if you can light things on fire. Is really all he's I asking. I do want to know that. Oh, we can do that. Yeah, we can do that kind of stuff. We, we, we have some uh, good machinery. It's lots of fun. We love our machinery here. Um, when uh, so we would have, we use laser cutting on a sheet metal side and on fabricated sheet metal. Uh, it, it's all either laser cut or water jet cut. So we have a two and a half kilowatt uh, Cincinnati CL6 laser, just a workhorse and the laser cuts about 20 hours a day. And uh, we have a water jet cutter made by WarJet. It takes water, compresses it to, literally compresses water. Uh, it goes down to two thirds of its volume and uh, comes out of this thing, 60 horsepower, of energy compressing it, comes out of a nozzle at three times the speed of sound and slices metal. Um, or anything space. else in its way, right? <laughs> well, it could be great for amputations, that kind of thing, <laughs> <in> medical business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's quite, quite a piece of machinery. Uh, we uh, bend with two types of machines. One is called press brakes, big hydraulic presses, and the other one's called a Older panel vendors, a really cool technology from uh, yeah, it comes out of Germany or Italy. We have a German machine, um, and they're cool, really computerized, really automated. Uh, and it will just take metal and just kind of grabs it and just bends up a whole sequence of bends, extremely precise. And uh, then we have uh, yeah, you know, the rest of it. That's really the, the heavier stuff. We do we, we do milling. Yeah, we we we, we uh, cut metal with milling, uh, just moving into the world of machining. And uh, then that's, we have some really fancy welders, John, you would love our welders. Uh, cold metal transfer welding, it's called. It's a derivative of uh, wire feed MIG welding, except it transfers metal, instead of sputtering it hot and spraying it all over the place, it, it actually pushes the wire and it touches the, the, the place where the joint's made very precise, very low amount of heat that goes into it. So they have, have lots of toys. Yeah, have you, are you getting the, uh, do, do you understand that they have all the toys that I want? I do, I do understand that. All of them, that. like I, not like, oh, I want, uh, there's a toy yeah. that I want, or you, they you have a toy. You do remember, it's 15 have, degrees there, right? Uh, it does not work for John? me. John? Yep. You can, uh, you can send a resume. Oh. <laughs> I am hey, actually a wait, good welder. You can't take them. I'm a good welder, but you don't need me because you have a robotic welder, so <laughs> I mean. <laughs> What am I supposed to do? Okay, uh, we have another question. What OS do you guys use on your servers for your backups and stuff? Um, the operating system we use is CentOS. So you basically set up your servers all as just normal Linux boxes and then file serve off of those? Yep, that's exactly what we do. We sell a couple pieces of software we use for managing it a little bit, but it's all uh, we use entirely all open source stuff for our internal, our internal things. The, okay. These guys are uh, surrounding me here, uh, very competent command line Linux, like, you know, serious uh, geek uh, OS kind of people. And uh, my command line skills atrophied uh, decades ago, <laughs> um, unfortunately. I'm embarrassed to say. <laughs> Um, There's another question. Yes, I see another question. From Ken, uh, actually. Actually, yes. What kind of feedback have you gotten from the Storinator version 4? Uh, on the whole version 4? Uh, it's a version 4, and we're referring to direct wire, is what we call it. So the previous stuff, and this stuff, of course, goes back to our friends at uh, Backblaze, um, and uh, who we'll provide backup, uh, unlimited backup for $4 a month, uh, nice little internet utility they give you. Their first
first designs were like most large storage machines. They're based on something called port multiplier backplanes. And that's a card that basically you, you plug uh, like these uh, five slot port multiplier backplanes, put plug five hard drives into it, and then you plug one SATA wire into it. So it basically multiplexes a single SATA connection. And uh, they very successfully built their business on that, and our versions up to four were all uh, backplane based. It's kind of sort of it's industry standard. And uh, we, in, in cooperation with Backblaze, and also it was an inspiration from some other people as well. Uh, the engineering folks at Netflix had a lot to do with this. And we have a couple other customers who are uh, basically in the, the, the cable and satellite uh, streaming business. Uh, their issue is speed, and uh, you know they're looking to move, you know, things like uh, you know be able to stream thousands of movies simultaneously from one of these servers, and the backplane machines couldn't do that. So we collectively developed a version four, which we call direct wired technology, and uh, so direct wired technology basically we have a, a, an array of you know, physically the, the machines look the same. It's the same sort of drive mounting system physically, except instead of plugging the hard drives directly into a port multiplier board, they actually plug into a cable. So we have special custom cables made. And, uh, and these cables all lead back to something called a host bus adapter card, which is a fancy name for a high speed uh, interface card where you plug in a whole bunch of uh, the hard drives to it. So the architecture became very simple. We got a server motherboard with a PCI slot, put an HDA card into it, and then plug a whole bunch of drives directly into it. So we're not going through this extra layer of multiplexing and then the extra layer of software drivers that you need on top of it. So it ends up being simpler. It becomes modular, it's upgradable. You can remove the HDA adapter, put in a high performance HDA adapter if you want. Uh, and, uh, and, and so it's, it's much, much simpler. Um, and what we've had out there is we've found these machines that that simplicity has really, uh, yeah, you know, it's been absorbed well. Um, I mean, I'm trying to think, I don't have any marker in my mind on how long it's been since we started shipping the reports. No, it's been in March or April. March or April last year, so nine months ballpark, that kind of thing. And it's been wonderful. Uh, these things are, uh, you know, in, in the realm of really large storage machines, they're smoking fast. Mm -hmm. Lots of people are getting a gigabyte per second, and, and we're seeing things like between one and one and a half gigabytes per second uh, internal transfer rates in the arrays. And, uh, you know, it doesn't take too much effort to be able to read data out of the storage arrays and move it down a, a, a 10 gigabit NIC and saturate it. So the speed is good and the reliability's been, been just great. So they've, been, they've really, really paid off. And we've heard that, like we use these ourselves and uh, you know, we have uh, you know, there's a thousand machines or something like that out there at this point, I do believe. And uh, feedback's been, uh, been wonderful. By the way, um, a, couple of, a couple of things to follow up with on yeah. that. First of all, we of course have one of those in our data center. And from a speed perspective, it was interesting because uh, Ken was doing some testing recently. And what he did, right now, we, we have a lot of machines throughout our uh, facility that he connected up via gigabit ethernet. Now, we, we actually ran in our facility um, CAT6A so that we could push 10 gigabit uh, ethernet to the data center, but we don't have a whole ton of machines sitting around that have 10 right. gigabit ethernet in them. That's not easy to do, okay? So what he did was he hooked up like, I think at one point 10 or 11 machines that were all over, direct wired into our network, so not Wi-Fi or anything. And he started running tests on uh, doing, you know, having all of the machines simultaneously hammering the Storinator and he was saturating every one of those machines ability to do the testing before he hit, you know, the 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 limits on what the storinator was able to push out. So, I think that the 
the biggest, uh, we, we'll, we'll, call, we'll use the word weakness just because there's, you know, every system has a weakness. The biggest weakness that we, we were able to encounter was the CPU. Like, right. you know, we can saturate the CPU before we can saturate everything else. So uh, that's pretty impressive. And we are very soon going to be implementing a full uh, network based yep. uh, video editing workflow so that what we intend to do is ha is ingest all of our video onto the storinator and then work through the network on it. Yeah, currently a lot of our editors will have to pull down footage, edit it locally, put it back, or, or whatever they need to do. Dave, I think, edits off the network currently, but it's not quite as oh, efficient actually, as it will be. Oh, actually, only parts of it, yeah. I, it, oh, yeah, only parts because, of it. Because what happens is, um, you know, as you guys know, we, we uh, obviously, uh, primarily what we do is video production. Right. And so what we do is we go into the studio, we shoot, we shoot on, portable media cards of some sort. We take those media cards back and ingest them onto a computer. It could right. be any, it could be this laptop. Sometimes I'll import into here. Well, once that footage is ingested onto an individual machine, it's vulnerable. It's, right. it's vulnerable because this machine has one hard drive. Uh, as soon as I put it in there and erase it from the card, right. what would happen if I were to have that hard drive die. So we're trying to eliminate all these potential single points of failure. So the thought would be, why not ingest yeah. right to the storinator? Because we put 10 gigabit ethernet in there. It's as fast as it would be on your on your desktop or your laptop. Why not do that, you know? Yeah. Anyway, that was that was my little kind sidebar. Kind of a side, side note, an aside as they call it. Um. Yeah, you know what, if, if I could just mention that too, th that whole video thing. You know, the problem we see, I have a friend who runs a small video production company, it's called Crew Productions, and it, it's, you know, about 10 kilometers from where we are here, and uh, I go over and visit him in his shop, and he has, you know, I don't know, 50 or 100 external hard drives sticking around, and he has done a brilliant job, absolutely brilliant job, in my mind, of creating a whole array of power bars to plug them in, uh, you know, how he arranges his USB cables, and he has them catalogs, so if you want to go to a certain project, you plug certain drives in, USB hubs. Mm -hmm. and, but as he said, it's grown so far beyond, uh, you know, where he should have taken it. And uh, anyway, he's getting a storinator very shortly from us. And uh, his nice thing is he says, being able to put all his video library in one place, it becomes searchable at that point. And then on top of that, we do believe, and we're waiting for you guys to fully wire up your 10 gigabit uh -huh. um, uh, connections. When you make a RAID array, you're reading your files out in parallel from your hard drives. So the, the, the data comes faster out of a RAID array than it does you know, if, you're, if you're editing locally with your own hard drive. So, and, and let me put some numbers to that. You know, a single mechanical hard drive is gonna read data out that ballpark 150 megabytes per second. So, so and the, yeah, and that that's good, at, you know, a local machine. Um, and if you take a um, a RAID array and, and put 10 drives together, uh, you know, in, in our machines we can read stuff. You know, internally we see up to 1.5 gigabytes. Yeah. You can't get 1.5 gigabytes down. You can only get eight or 900 megabytes per second down a a 10 gigabit wire. Yep. But when we do that, it means your data actually loads into your, uh, up into your editing program faster. Well, let's put it this way. Up. Even, you know, you're, you're comparing it to, let's say, a, a standard hard drive, and you're being generous when you're saying that it might achieve 150 megabytes per second, because some, some of them won't, won't be much more than 100, 110. But even an SSD drive won't achieve more than maybe 600 or something. So you'd have to, in order to achieve faster than what you can get through that 10 gigabit ethernet, or you know, 10 gigabit connection, you would need to have a, a RAID array, a local RAID array of SSD drives to beat the performance of the network-based system. Exactly, and, and as you pointed out, when you use a single drive, you don't have data security. Right. You have a RAID array, you have data security. To get secure data, it's in one location, it's searchable, and it's accessible faster. 
do things right than it would be if you had it locally. So uh, you know, for the small video application, uh, it, it you know it's, it's just an absolutely wonderful application. We are just another little anecdote in that uh, Chris McGee, who's uh, you guys know Chris, he's been down with you guys. Uh, he's our, our marketing person here, one of our marketing people. And uh, Chris edits our little video efforts that we do. And uh, and uh, Chris has a storinator on his desk right now. We're making a new model, which uh, I the, the new model is a Brett's uh, baby. Um, it, it's it's smaller, it has fewer drives in it, uh, and it also has a most of the machines you make have like server room power supplies that unfortunately, I mean, they perform beautifully. But they're but very they're loud and big <laughs> and power <laughs> hungry. Yeah, mini, mini jet engines. Yeah, yeah. The jet engines. So this one has a whisper quiet, ultra efficient power supply in it. Nice. So it's designed to go into the small video shop is what it is. So you can have it in the shop and, and not interfere. It's actually quieter than the desktops we have. Wow. Now that's actually that's impressive. That actually leads us to a few. That leads us down a few other paths here. First of all, we said we might want to talk a little bit about your roadmap, okay? Right. But so there's some there's some other questions. You want to you well, want to yeah, tackle so some of these questions here? Well, yeah. So actually, there were there were two questions that are kind of going to be the same answer. So Hubert asked why you're called 45 Drive, and Gord asked what led to you settling on 45 Drives, not necessarily 40 Drives or 50 Drives. That's a, a wonderful question. Uh, what came about? So I'll tell you how, how we started up. Our, our friends at Backblaze said, oh, you know, their, their take was they looked at the server business and storage business, and they saw that hard drives were inexpensive. They saw that people had a need for a really convenient backup. But when they looked at it and they said, uh, you know, putting you know, trying to put that together, you got to put these things in servers to get them online, and servers were way too expensive. Mm -hmm. So, so they said, "Oh, oh, I'm going to say probably five years ago, to um, you know, rethink storage and strip it down, and uh, you know, figure out how to make it out of commodity components and make something that just does storage and just does storage well, just does it cost effectively." So they worked for a long time to you know figure out. But we worked with them on our uh, Enclosure, the pro case side of our business, uh, trying to fabricate, uh, you know, sort of the ultimate computer. Like we were the, the metal part of it and, and the integrated systems part of it for them. And, you know, it ended up work for, you know, I'd say years of work went into trying to figure out how you could sort of most effectively stop hard drives into a box. And the criterion on it, a couple of criteria that, that shaped the box. Number one is going into a 19-inch rack mount enclosure. 19-inch mm -hmm. width, you got to leave a little bit for rails and, and the like, and you got thickness metal on the side. But there's only so many hard drives you can stuff in there. You still need a little bit of space for ventilation. So that's one physical constraint, and that's on the width of your storage bay. The other side of it is on the depth of your storage bay. Uh, there's a limitation in the SATA standard. Uh, which is a one meter cable and 3.3 feet, and you know, these things can't go, you know, as the crow flies. Unfortunately, that, that makes twists and turns. And when you do that, what we come up with is that they fit, uh, you know, across the thing in a row of 15. Uh, you know, it's fat crossways in a row of 15. So when you put three of them in there, uh, you end up with 45 hard drives in the thing, which is what Backblaze went with. And you also don't you also have one other you have one other constraint uh, beyond the technical constraints, which is in addition to the width and, and depth, you have the rack, the actual rack, the right. cabinets that you mount them in only have so much depth as well. Like in our in our case, um, the cabinets that Chatsworth provided us are super deep. Right. Like they're they're like way deeper than normal ones, but most of them you wouldn't be able to get much more depth. Like you have three rows of 15, but if you wanted to add a fourth row of 15, even if you cabinet. could, yeah, even if you could technically build it, if people can't fit it in their cabinet, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, um, y yes, that's a constraint. Now, you can do things like you use an open back rack, um, and you can work around that. You're Let it work stick out. Yeah. You know, the, the other issue on it is that they get heavy, 
um, you know, fully loaded this thing when you put it full of hard drives. I think it's 160 or 100. It's uh, yeah, 125 pounds. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's a lot of weight. Yeah. And uh, anyway, it does fit. You can get an extra row in them. And again, I'm giving away our product development roadmap here. <laughs> We'll do the math on that. But that's how we got to 45. And you'll see smaller is obviously taking away a row, bigger is adding a row into it. And when we add a row, it's really interesting. You can get the 60, and if you wish to get larger, we actually do all kinds of custom jobs where people will come and say, I want a machine that's totally different. And we're working on one right now. Somebody wants, I, I think it's uh, 100 or 110 or something like that. And it's really interesting because then we bump into the one meter SATA cable uh, limitation. So we have to arrange the things rather than having all the storage banks on one side of the machine, we have to arrange them on the other side of the machine. Yeah. And I don't know if this guy's going to have a forklift to move them around and get done, but yeah, it's a serious uh, piece of hardware. Well, now you know why it's called 45 drives, I guess. So yeah. well, that, that was a longer answer than I expected, actually. Yeah, there's a lot there's more a lot detail more to it. That goes into it. Unlike when we named Livid Lobster, there, oh, we're going to bring that up again. There will anyway. That's a different story entirely. <laughs> um, another question came in: Can 45 drives be used in big data centers? You actually touched on that slightly earlier, like Google, for instance, uh, or is it not usable like that? Oh, it, it, oh, very much so. We have a number of customers who have these things in the in the hundreds. Uh, it's, it's absolutely wonderful for that. Uh, and, uh, you know, what we'll see is uh, you know, typical configurations uh, will be 45 or go to the 60 for, for better economics. And then uh, you'll see a redundant power supply around boot drives, which give you uptime and uh, you know, good connectivity. That's the typical kind of configuration we see in large data centers. And we'll see stuff like, you know, uh, vault storage. Uh, Cloud storage. Um, we're, we're partnered up with a company called Cloudian, who does like cloud provider software, and we provide a sort of cloud storage solution out of the box uh, with, with their stuff. Uh, we have people uh, running Hadoop, you know, ultra scalable object store clusters. Um, so, and uh, yeah, we have all sorts of people that are doing uh, the big data applications, yeah. data center applications. Yeah. 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 A lot of museums and libraries are digitizing all of their everything they've got. So our machine's perfect for that. Okay, so, I wanna I wanna take this in a different direction because Yes, you guys have been doing uh, big data center stuff. That's kind of been the core of your business. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Storinator's awesome. We love the Storinator, we love the Beerinator even more, but that's a different story. What I wanna know is uh, when are you going to build a baby nader? <laughs> like when? When? Are, when so you you, you touched on this a little bit. You said Chris had when you first said Chris had a story nader on his desk. I actually laughed. I right. looked at Callie and laughed because the thing is so damn big. I'm like, <laughs> how big of a desk does he have? Okay. Um, but then you said, yeah, we're working on some smaller ones. So tell me this. How much smaller are we ever going to see? Like a really uh, like a, Four a drive rack or mount, an eight drive not or what that you, small, but okay. like, how about a single row, like a 15 row? I want something that will still rack mount, mm -hmm. but it's super shallow, so right. it could get, go in a shallow rack, and it's just like 15. Can we get a one row? Can we get a one row baby nader, or are we gonna only go two rows? You know, what, what's 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 in the pipeline here? Yeah, well, I'll tell you one of our other constraints. What what we do. It really is about lowest price per hard drive slot. And uh, when we get to 30, we're still, it, it's interesting, you look when you get smaller, what economies you get, like what's it cost, uh, you know, to, to, to manufacture them, cost the components going into it. At 30, our economics are still wonderful. Uh, we haven't really looked at a row of 15. Um, you're gonna do some diminishing returns on, on shrinking that last row. You, you, you do free up an extra, about five inches of box space, and uh, but we don't lop all that much cost off it when we do that. And uh, you know, what is that price point? Uh, you know, is it still attractive or not? We don't quite know, and we haven't gotten there yet. John is, is basically where we are on it. 
uh, it's a question that's bounced around in here. We get we go for all kinds of strange ideas, both of our own, as well as you know, very very much driven from what people come in asking for on the customer side of our business. Yeah. And uh, you know that the the, the baby nader. Thanks, I love that name by the way. Thank you. That's actually. Uh, he just might steal it. Well, while you're you thinking, can pay me like a nickel for right. each, you know, <laughs> each like idea. Uh, each one, yeah, every one sold or something. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, while you're thinking about it and processing what you might do, there was another request from the chat room from Ben. He wants a he wants a device that will store both his hard drives and his beer. Right. Yeah. Can, can you do yeah. that? The combinator. The combinator. <laughs> the combinator. The combinator. There you go. Okay. Okay. We have one. I. We happen to have the inside track on something else that you guys are working on. A very special project. Project. We hold secrets from you guys. I'm sorry, but yes, we do. Yes. Yes. Callie alluded to it earlier because in the opening you actually dropped a bomb and you said. El Was I not supposed to? You said electric cars, and I'm not electric sure. Electric vehicles. Electric vehicles, you said. I think said. I said electric vehicles. Are you guys working on something that we should know, that we everyone should know about, or what's up? Or was I just uh, speaking uh, too quickly? You know, I, I, I hope the cat's out of the bag. I'm not going to say too much, but I'll tell you this. Okay, on our quarter case side, we work for people who innovate. Um, Tesla Motors, we do a lot of work for Tesla Motors. And I think they have a good gig, right? And you want so, in on it? This is the market. I want in on it. <laughs> so, John, you know what's going on here, too, right? Because you're involved in this, too. So we're hacking up something in the EV space, inspired by Tesla Motors. And, and, and John P. is uh, part of the intellectual property developer. Wait, so I, 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 you know what's going to happen? It sounds to me like he's sloughing responsibility uh, off sounds, on me. It's it sounds like, like that as well to me. You know, yeah. it's like, oh yeah, John P's the one who. It, it's not us. It's John P who did. Uh, <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, so 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 you're working on a super secret something that that moves. Top secret, top secret. Okay, okay. Okay, all right. all right, that's all we can say then. You guys are just gonna have to wait for all that info. I, thanks uh, thanks for everybody pitching in questions and whatnot. Yes. If you have more. Chat room is going crazy. Uh, leave yep. them below. Yeah. Just leave them. a comment and the 45 Drives team will be paying attention and uh, we'll continue to answer your questions if they can. We'll pay attention as well. Daryl. Doug and Brett, you guys are awesome. And thank you so much for all the work that you guys do over at 45 Drives because we love it. We yep. love to take advantage of it. <laughs> yes, we is do. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And thanks, thanks everybody else for watching. We're going to wrap this show up right now, but you know what to do. Thumbs up on YouTube. So if you got them. See you later. Bye. <laughs> so he cut they cut out the audio completely yeah, we, cut out at the end yeah then. can you guys say something hello there okay. hello. Hello. it came back yeah it came just, back like there was something that i didn't hear so sorry if that was awkward for you guys i think it'll be fine cool <laughs> awkward silences jenny yeah, yeah. says <laughs> jenny says there should be a box called the posinator oh hey that's what oh here's a baby here Oh wow, that's cool! Oh, cute! What yeah, goes in that? That's just a, that's just like a little mock-up model thing that you guys built. It's a real scale model, is what it is. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, if only you had cool. like little tiny baby hard drives to go in it or something. <laughs> so you know, when we were, when we, when I brought up the idea of having like the single row, and I know I've said this before, and I know it's not necessarily practical and and we discussed the cost effectiveness of it just eliminating a row it doesn't really change much but um, it was funny because somebody in the chat room even said uh, uh, you know uh, as a as for example a competitor to like Synology you right. know Synology QNAP uh, uh, Drobo etc and I think that they also I think if you moved into that space, what you guys would have to consider is that 
the, it's a totally different type of competition because right now you are you are moving up the chain, right? You're like, let's go bigger, let's go faster, enterprise grade, etc. But those smaller boxes, you'd have to downscale. You'd have to think in terms of what's the what's the smallest motherboard with the tiny amount of RAM and the least amount of processor that would be required to be able to handle right. provisioning some system and try and you know cram it in a box. But I but I will say that for example, I, we primarily use storage here in our data center uh, for the business, but of course at home we all have these little small units. Right. And even our travel TriCaster rig uh, that we take with us to CES and NAB and stuff like that, we have a NAS unit installed in there. It's just a four bay NAS unit that's installed in there because we do have to use it on the go. And you have to have something that's shallow enough to, to fit in not only a 19 inch wide, but about an 18 to 20 inch deep space, you know? And so I don't know, I think that the same thing that we use there, a lot of people would use in homes or in small businesses where, like you said, the big loud fans, the, the data center type rack mountable stuff is, not going to work, but the the silent fans and the smaller chassis they would work. I don't know. So the my my friend Ray J, uh, Crew Productions, he talked about that same mobile thing, and you know said it's a bit of an agony for him, and uh, you know ha having lots of space there would be a, a very very positive thing for him. And we've kind of just kicked that around that we do build something stripped down, and I looked at it and I said. Uh, some really good vibration isolation on the, uh, yeah. uh, on, you know, totally shock mount the mm -hmm. driver, right? Yes. So it might, might be something on that. And, and it uh, could be, and it could be in a case like that, uh, it could just be a specialty product that doesn't, uh, it doesn't have to be for people who are quite so price sensitive, you know, it's, it's different. Like in ours, what we, what we do in order to try and worry about that shock proofing is, First of all, use SSDs in it, not traditional drives. Um, so it could even be, maybe the Baby Nader is 15 or 20 SSD slots and in a shock mountable case, and now it's ruggedized, it could be used for mobile applications, it could be whatever. Be awesome. And in, in those mobile application situations, you don't need we don't care about having huge amounts of aggregate storage. What we care about is having safe, reliable network storage while we're traveling. When we come back, we take it, we dump it on the Storinator anyway. So, you know, who knows? I don't know. That might be another avenue. Might be. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, that's, uh, the, the other one we got from Ray J, he's an Apple shop, and he likes his Thunderbolt connections. Oh, yeah. And uh, we're... We actually have a thunder. These guys have a Thunderbolt card, and actually, have you plugged it in yet? Not, not yet. So we're looking at. Uh, so Linux has in the 3.16 kernel now has Thunderbolt uh, support. driver support built into it. So we're thinking uh, we're going to put Thunderbolt into this and see you know if it shows up as a storage item on your you know uh, plug them into your Thunderbolt connections. That'd be interesting. Awesome. Cool. Does that mean anything to you guys at all? You guys use Thunderbolt side of it at all? Or? Yeah. We do. We do, especially for individual portable machines. Right. You know, like if I was editing with my with my laptop, we use Thunderbolt. We don't use it so much in in the in the studio. Uh, we occasionally use it, but again, for us, we're we are truly. It's not just you know we're not just saying it. We're truly migrating to this network based platform and we are the storinator is going to be the center of the universe so the, the that that takes that de-emphasizes things like thunderbolt devices you know except for maybe individual little like two terabyte or one terabyte drives that we would carry with us for temporary usage which we use thunderbolt but every you know we're we're also a far more advanced video shop than most so uh, it could be that a Thunderbolt-based product would would have a broader appeal, especially since you you see that we're able to actually use we can incorporate the enterprise-grade gear into our workflow anyway. 
Right on. Yeah, cool. Hey, I hate to be the one to break up the party. Uh -oh. um, but we, we got like 14 we have other a things. Well, we have a meeting, actually, oh, okay. that we need to step into. I, so. I thought we were going to have a beer from the beer dater. Uh, <laughs> I would like to do that, yeah. <laughs> We'd love to. You guys have two on us. Right. <laughs> how's, the, uh, how's the barbecue restaurant doing? Good, good. Absolutely. I've, everybody always tempts everybody else with barbecue smells throughout the Geek House every Thursday and Friday. I know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, I still have memories. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for that. That was wonderful. Great fun. We had awesome, fun. you did, too. Thank you. We'll chat with you again soon, okay? Sounds great. Thank all you. right. Bye. Bye, guys. Wait.